Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero. J Man speaks with my special guest, Howard T. Nix Jr., who you did not hear from until right now. All right, it's your boy H. Nix, man. It's your man Howard, man. You guys know me. We out here. I've been I've been waiting to do this for quite some time. So, you know, this is like the introduction of me. I'm yeah. Howard. He's coming out. He's out here. He's yeah, out here. I'm out here now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and it's funny because uh, I, I reached out to you during like during the pandemic. Right. I, I started a new show. It was called Real Talk from the Rock where I didn't, it wasn't even real estate related. It was just people that I thought were, were inspirational, that were doing their thing from Rochester that I've known growing up, uh, minorities, because I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, you know, and it's like we're doing our thing regardless of how we brought, we're brought up, whatever adversity was thrown in our way. Right. And at the time, what happened, Howard? What happened at the time? At the time, you know, I was going to come out, you know, and I was, he had called me. And I've been waiting to do this, except, you know, like, I'm, that's why I'm here, because it's sort of like a journey that I want you guys to share with me. It's uh, basically breaking out of your comfort zone. And uh, maybe I've been in my comfort zone for a lot of years, you know, because I was always the person behind the camera. And I did a lot of years of behind the camera. And I've seen a lot of people and had a chance to see a lot of things, but... A lot of these stories and uh, experiences that have happened over the years, I feel like now is the time to start sharing it with everybody. Right. And, you know, like there's so much that's always going on. And I, I, I mean, I've been blessed to meet so many people. I've met so many people and... Uh, it's been a great, you know, a great journey so far. So now well, I want to share. Just, yeah, just getting yeah. started. Though, yeah, right? I want, yeah, I want to share. Started. I want to share with everybody. So let's let's kind of tell the story. Uh, you know, you you grew up like I did, suburbs, Greece, New York. Yes, sir. Right, which is a suburb of Rochester. If you're not watching from the area, if you're outside the area, there's Rochester, and then there's there's suburbs. We're on, we grew up on the west side. All right. West side. All west right. side. Um, in, in Greece, New York, and athlete, right? Yeah. All the sports? Um, you know, I played basketball, basketball football. football, ran track. And, you know, back then we played a lot of sports where you were, it wasn't really organized. So we just were always playing ball. Right. You know, we always played ball, you know, pick up games. Something was going on at all times. And, uh, you know, I left Highland Hospital and I went to Norton Street. You know, <laughs> <laughs> when I left when I left Highland Hospital, we uh, lived on Norton Street, and then we moved out to the Burbs. You know, uh, before I started kindergarten. So just to correct that, you know, East okay. Side by birth. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So shout out to the East Side. I had to clear. I had to clear it up. Like, I had to no, clear it up. Nah, up Norton nah. Street. Norton I had, Street. No, I had. Oh, to, you know, Laura Drive is where I grew up, but yeah. I had to go and show love to the East Side. You know All right. I mean, we we case. both love, love the Rock. Period. Yeah, we love the 585. You right. You know what I'm saying? ROC is cats. in the building. That's a fact. You know? So uh, sports, you did football, everything, football, basketball, track. But then That's you went right. to college. What, what sports did you play I went in college to college. To I went to West Virginia University and East Tennessee State University. Shout out to both of those programs. Mountaineers, right? The Mountaineers, Mountaineers and the Buccaneers. You know, the same colors, too. That blue is something about that blue and gold, that blue and yellow. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to both those squads because uh, I'm at so many friends like who I call brothers so many coaches who yeah. maybe at the time they used to you know piss me off except I love all those cats now so uh well and some of them they instilled that work ethic probably, oh right, yeah, right yeah, there, yeah, right? yeah 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 wake up grind get it done no, absolutely no, excuses, no complaining absolutely so you know leaving uh leaving a 585 and you know this is back in the 90s not the same I, I didn't know anybody who had ever went off to college like that. You know, like I had my best friend, you know, Damon, he was going off to school, but I didn't really like know anybody who were who was in college, like actually getting a degree or what they were going to school for, or, you know, anybody playing ball like that. So, you know, we knew of John Wallace. Right. You know, you he remember? Was like, he was like an urban legend. Yeah, John Wallace was the urban legend. We was like, oh yeah, well we oh. got... John John Remember, went. Yeah. He went to the pros. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. When he like, I played with his brother back in Little League, Kippy, and I remember John would come to the um to our 
to our uh, football games. You know, that's back when I was a quarterback, you know, yeah, running the thing a little that's bit. John John over there. Yeah, bro. Yeah. We seen him. We was like, yo, he'll be at the game, you know, yelling at us. But it, that's how I always felt connected to everybody, you know. And uh, I, I had a lot of friends from the area, so. You know, I was always cool with the Mobleys and the Mobleys and, and the Longs and all them. They were always, set, that oh, was yeah. second nature for all those guys to be around each other. So that's how I was sort of, I was like the younger and smaller brother, you know, walking around like, hey guys, can I play? Yeah. <laughs> can I hang out? You know, they were like, get out of here. No, I'm just joking. They wouldn't do me like that. But <laughs> <You're> like, <"Sure, laughs> they have that. to get to the park early in order to get a game, you know? Well, that probably made you better too, right, Frank? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Playing, playing up with those guys. So when, when you went to college, the dream, the dream is always, always like, like make it to make it. Everybody, right? you don't go to college and say like I want. I mean, let's be honest. You don't want. You want to get an education. You're not going. To, education. I'm gonna go get a degree and then look, I'll see what happens. Look, we started playing ball <laughs> when we were kids. Like you, I mean, and people can say what they want to. You know, like I was like four years old doing backflips. You know what I'm you saying? Are, yeah. yeah you were. So it's it was true. one of them things like this is something I was working on Girl, for a lot of years before I even got to college. So like you talk about a head start, like I, I can see if somebody's walking around with flashcards all the time and having dreams of writing that thesis or right. having <laughs> dreams of being yeah. like the Valor Victorian. That that wasn't it. I had hourly dreams of <laughs> scoring the game winning touchdown, making a hard hit or you know, doing something crazy on the basketball court. So all my dreams growing up were always about playing ball. So as far as going off to college and actually having a clue what I was going to college for, I'm going to hit that column that says, <laughs> do, do not, did, did not apply. I had no clue. I had no, and I had yeah. so many good teachers around me growing up. Shout out to all my teachers and all the students who came together as a community yeah. and helped me graduate. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> all y'all. Thank you. Because no, it was, yeah, it was some great village. students. Yeah, it took, took a, a village. village. Yeah. Get across that stage, you know, with so, the grades I had. So, know, I had good grades. <laughs> well, we're, we're not watching you play for the Bills right now. So, didn't, no. Didn't make it, but there's maybe there's still, maybe you never know. Okay. You know what? At one point, you know, that's everybody's dream. Yeah. And it's everybody's dream. I was supposed to be playing for the Buffalo Bills. Y'all never called me. Never called me. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I'll call they, Josh real they, quick. Let me call they Josh. They didn't call me because I feel like, I feel like I'm one of them guys, like, even to this day, like, my brother-in-law, my dad, my whole family, you know, like, they always mention football. You know, everybody mention football to you when you play some football. But it's still at that point where I'm looking at the games yeah, and like I'm looking at, bro, it's too soon because I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at the cornerbacks, you know, the hair off in the back. You know, I, I'm in the huddle. I'm like, bro, you don't even know what this feel like. It's uh, like fourth and goal. I know what the corners feel like. I know, like, you know, it's just a rush that you get from playing the game. Right, and it's so right. hard. It's so hard. Like, I, I want to tell everybody this first things first. Because people always ask me, why don't I film a lot of football? I'm telling y'all, man, I'm going through something. Gra no, it's a gradual process. Football, you guys have to understand. Yes. You yeah. guys have to understand. Yeah. If I'm filming you playing football, by the end of the week, I'm basically going to try to work my way into that secondary, <laughs> me, into that secondary huddle. Because I'm going to tell one of these coaches, I'm going to be true. like, yo, bring somebody over. Let me show you guys how yo, to that go. Is so Let me true. show you how to run this secondary, coach. I, I don't know if you're coaching it right, you know, that, but that's just that me. Is, that is so, no, that's and, and it's true. hard. Like, I am like, yo, like anybody basketball. anybody ever loved the game, that's so true. Basketball, you can film eight games. I had great memories playing basketball with some of the best players in the world. To this day. To this day, we have inside jokes to this day that we remember back from when we were kids, you know? And, like, sometimes you can just, like, send off a little message and everybody will sort of remember the vibe. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I played with, like, the team I played with, you know, like, because you guys got to remember before, like, the J-Mac memory, you know, Coach Johnson was our coach. And mm -hmm. Coach Johnson, while he was becoming the uh, – you know how he's a public speaker now, personal mm -hmm. health, yeah, all these things, development. Coach Johnson, we were basically his experiments. And he used a lot of his techniques right. with us. And we were the class, so a lot of us have done extremely well. 
I'm not going to, you know, and I have to give the man his props. Coach Johnson had a program going on back then. Him and uh, Coach DeRoy, shout out to Coach DeRoy. I love that, man. Shout out to Coach DeRoy. But uh, him and Coach Johnson, yeah, bro. All the way back from then because, like, the squad I played with, you know, we might not be the the people's champs, you know what I'm saying? Right, Except right. Uh, we do have a lot of people put their foot down as major contributors to a lot of things outside of basketball also. So, you know. So, you, you don't, don't make, make it. it. You, you haven't made it. it. That's <laughs> a better way to put it. You yep. haven't made it. Not past tense. Ain't made it. And, and, and so then... Where, where, where does video, video come, come in? Like, where, where does the filming, filming, at what point did you say, like, yo, I'm just going to, because well, your first ones were, like, like VHS, yeah, well, like, look, camp you know, joints, remember, right? Like, yeah, don't let, don't let the looks fool y'all. I've been around for a while, you know what I'm saying? I've been around for a while, you know? <laughs> so, like, when I first started filming, it wasn't like where you can just grab, you, you remember, you couldn't just grab a cell phone. You right. know, you didn't have no cell phones that had yeah, all that. It's funny. I found so, this the other day. This was one of my first ones back in 2000-something. So when you used to film, you had to actually, they were mini DVs. And I started, my mom actually used to do a lot of uh, photography and videography for her families. So I basically started off at, like, the family reunions. Okay. And I started, like, with the family reunions. And, uh, you know, I would be interviewing my family members at the cookout. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's sort of, you sort of break the ice that way. Right. And, uh, well, well and you, and you kind of get used to, because being a good videographer is getting, getting it out of the people, like getting right. them to talk, getting them to share their story, kind of diving deeper rather yeah. than just going through a checklist of questions, right? Well, that, well, the first, this is how everything starts if you're ever going to do anything. First, like in film, what you will learn is that. It's going to have to be somebody in front of the camera and somebody behind the camera. So when I first was starting, you know, I was shooting with the video camera. But then when I started to, you know, you want to use your personality and sort of who you are. So, you know, it's sort of a question of should I go in front of the camera? Right. And this is what happens to a lot of people. Some people might be really good in front of the camera. But... If you don't have anybody to film for you, to edit, <laughs> yeah. to graphics, to spend the time it takes to edit, you it's, know, yeah. and, and, and building your own, you know, sort of engines and everything. So what I had to do was get behind the camera because I had some really good people I worked with over the years, except regardless of what's happening Sooner or later, somebody's going to say, hey, look, man, how much are you going to pay me? And for the sort of work, you know, with video, and this right. is this is back before it was digital. So you actually had to come home with a video cartridge, you know, like the mini DV, and play it back in real time. So you had to wait for the oh, video man. camera to actually, you yes. know, capture everything from the computer to the right. computer. And, then, and this had to be real time. So if you was at a tournament that took eight hours, you got eight, nine hours of film, you're coming back I home. I you had to wait to yeah. get all the footage. So it was so time consuming. Yeah, compared to now just, where you yeah. can just go, ah, I want to get this clip because I know this is when he dunked on that dude. Like, yeah, now you can just, yeah, right now you can, and you put it out the next second later. But, you know, that's the difference once you develop a vault collection. You know, you have a, a wide collection, and that's what, I, that's what I have. I have a huge collection of a lot of different uh, games, a lot of different interviews over the years, you know, mm -hmm. starting all the way back from, uh, like, you guys see me in Rochester, and I actually was doing this before I came back home. So the first person who actually like sort of put me on, you know, as far as new recruit goes, it was Brandon Jennings. And that's when he was at Oak Hill. So a lot of these young cats out here who are playing ball, you don't understand. Like you guys have actually the influence to put on a whole company because I right. was actually, I was filming, you know, kids and we, we were filming you know we we're getting into ideal of basketball but that isn't where i really started you know i started you know just trying to film whoever you can starting off at a barbershop you know shout out to johnson city craig them they remember me from the barbershop came in the barbershop you know i used to have a couple you know 
couple of little sips of something, and I walk in the barber shop, and that's where I started because I had to get the yeah. confidence to be able to talk to anybody. So I started off in a barber shop where I basically knew everybody, right. and they were cool enough, you know, to speak to me. So from there, you know, um, you start working your way into dealing with the players and all that type of stuff. So it's a well, process. It's, it's it's so there's so many different ways to do video. And I, always, right. I always talk about this too, where like. You're the subject and the narrator recording yourself, right? right? Like you said first, or you're recording something else is the subject and you're the narrator. Like that's that's right. Story, right? You're behind the camera, but you're like, yo, and you're kind of describing the scene, what's happening, who's about to get it's, it's, you know, the highlights. It is so because look, I love watching it. I like I'm gonna like I couldn't tell you who the guys are sometimes. Yeah. But I'm like, damn. You see, man, and that's how they make you feel. Right. It's that that's how they that's how they make you it's feel. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the thing about the game, and that brings out and you know, behind the camera, you know, like over the years, you know, that was me, you know, like a lot of the a lot of the catchy things I was like, oh, don't do them like that. Yeah, right. Don't right. do them like that. Yeah. That man got a family back home. <laughs> His family yeah. watching this game. Yeah. Don't do them like that. Or you, you know, we out here. Tell, yeah, we, we out, out here. here, bro. That's the know? one. That's that's the episode I seen here. Was well, like, you, I, you I know, gotta tell you, when I, when I say we out here, you know, you gotta get that to my man uh, Keith McGee. Keith McGee, you see, this is why I gotta be up here because I can tell the stories of the actual players, you know, who yeah. have the most swag, who gave me so many little hidden jewels, and they still do it to this day. They always have little catch phrases and stuff like that. But my man yeah, Keith McGee, he was the person always saying like, yo, we out here. And then him and Micah, you know, so they was like, we out here, man, we out here. So back then, you know, they started uh, they started from there and it just sort of got cool. And we kept on saying we out here because we was constantly out here. You know, shout out to City Rocks, you know, shout out to the gang, shout out to Jim Hart. You know, that's all family over there. When you think about City Rocks and the 585, you definitely got to think about New Recruit because we know, in fact, all over. I ain't gonna lie, man. All over, bro. You know, like, you know, shout out to Albany, Syracuse, Buffalo, uh, Elmira, why, why don't New you, York um, City. Well, we're naming places. All over, why don't you name bro. some of the guys that went pro that you that you did videos for? Is oh, too many man. Bro, right. it's, it's so many people to name who went pro. Because you were in a car the other day with somebody going through the drive through. Oh, you talking about something. Zay. Oh, this old thing. They talking about Isaiah. <laughs> Yeah, man, look, Isaiah Stewart. <laughs> look, and yeah. Isaiah, like, you got to think. It's before Isaiah Stewart was Anthony Lamb and all those type of guys from Rochester. But yeah. Isaiah is actually, and I, I can say this open heart heartedly. You know what I'm saying? Y'all listen to me when I say this. Where we started at, it was never a question of, you know, because like any kid, when you're only 14 years old, 13, that age group, nobody knows if you're going to go to the pros. Right. And I have filmed so many kids. Like, remember, I think Brandon Jennings had won the Naismith Award. And when I filmed Brandon Jennings, I got some games from him. And I thought he was the dopest thing on two feet. And I didn't even know what none of these awards and categories really were. But to see Isaiah Stewart... To actually film him and have a relationship with him, you know what I'm saying? And watch him grow up. And it's not a relationship where it's like, hey, what can you do for me? What can you do for me? It's like, right. I actually watch this kid grow up. Like, I speak to his dad, his people all the time, especially Della. You know, me and Della, we rap all the time. You know, to all the way up to now to where Isaiah is turning to a grown man. You know, well, 21? He's about to be 21 years old, so... When when you start thinking about it, you know, to with these guys are so Close young. Is catching up to your age, almost, right? Well, nah, it's just it's just weird when you think about it. When yeah. you start thinking, but these kids are twenty years old, so half of their life will be ten years. Right. And what's ten years for us? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Not like that, you know. Like it means quarter. something to us, except There's some of us. Yeah, you, you just gotta think. He's like, older than me, so yeah. I'm just gonna put that You on. see, hey, yeah. hey. Yeah. Hey, hey, just listen. say it. Hey, y'all can call me uh. It's okay if you call <laughs> me uh. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's okay if you call me uh. I feel you. You know, but uh, with Zay, yeah, like that's one of the guys where I seen the whole process. And you only these guys are unicorns. 
To say you have a guy who went all the way through and everybody takes a different path. Right. But to actually be able to document his whole path. And, you know, I know there's people out there like, oh, man, you should have seen him when he was one years old, two years old, three years old. I, I wasn't there. You know, yeah. I wasn't there. But when I got there, it's well documented. And it, it's just cool to actually know these guys. But with Isaiah, I was but able to meet, to know him, know him, know him. But, I, you like, know, you know, some people meet somebody, somebody one time and they're like, Yo, yo, man, Howard, Howard my, my good friend, friend Howard. Howard. Yeah, bro, That's they be like, boy. yo, it's, yo it's, man, dude, we, we do a handshake. It's, it's like, like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, one time, dog. Yeah, it's bro. A boy. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's yeah. good to, the, and all the, all the guys, you know, you still got, you know, Quentin Rose, and Isaiah, you right, got right. Nate, all these right, guys. Quint Jordan's your cousin? your cousin? Who? Quint. Quint, oh no, that's one of the homies right there, bro. Oh, so he said Buffalo Quint. Bills are bums, man. Like, Buffalo why Bills, bro. Oh, what's you know up, man? Just, Go ahead. I, 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 I'll, 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 I'll still put you up I'm here. from the I'll area, bro. I'll still put him up. Go ahead. For real, bro. It's all right. We ain't from the area, bro. We out there. We out there. You know, I mean, I don't know how people hate on Buffalo. That gets me upset. Like, bro, you live 45 minutes from us. You know, 45 minutes from Buffalo, from the stadium. Quint? Quentin Jordan? Quentin, oh, he likes the Cowboys. Okay, oh, yeah. that that explains He's, it. We got we understand. Yeah, you know some people they just yeah. want to be part of the team. They want to be part of something. <laughs> you know I feel like you want to talk about like the ultimate underdogs that have been grinding it out for decades. You gotta love the Bills. You know, yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah, love I'm, the Bills. I'm, I'm, the Bills. I, I, well, I don't always respect about, the Bills. We understand. Yeah. We understand. We were going there, man. Yeah, you we understand. I I can see the pain. I can see it. I want to show up at the game and be like, Coach, just give me one shot. Just put me in. Let me break out of my back pedal just, just one in, time. Coach. On. Beasley was out this week. Beasley was out this week. Yeah, man. It's been, offense, it's been but... a crazy. It's been a crazy time period in America right now. It's been crazy. So um, let's talk about who do you? Who's the the most amazing person you feel like you've ever met in your lifetime? I, I think but I know besides, the answer. Besides um, Alice and Howard Nix, my parents, Putney Nix, my mom and dad, you know, love them. You know, you got to say that first. Yeah. Um, bro, I really feel like after meeting and hanging out with Jay-Z for hours, bro, there's, no, there's nobody else to compare to. There's nobody else, bro, because when you think about it, like, even if like everybody loved Jay is like the epitome of in my life. That that's the level of who you that's that's it. You know, I think he's one right. of those people who's a right. showstopper. You know, if he walks in a room and somebody else big is in the room, he's gonna yeah, the it, it's like stops. nobody sees you anymore. And right. it happened. <laughs> look, look, check this out. Here goes a real story. This happened when we were in LA. You know, shout out to Nazia Carter because, you know, in the City Rocks program, Kevin Shep, they all came together and it was oh, like, Nazia, that's uh, Jay's nephew. And I started filming Nas when Nas was young too, you know what I'm saying? That's a little homie right there. Actually gave me a shout out on my birthday. Shout out to Nas for hitting me up on my birthday. He's a real one. But when uh, we met up with Jay um, in L.A., let me tell you how big Jay is. Like, we're inside of a gym in L.A., bro. This is Wait, Hollywood. hold on, hold on. He's talking about Jay-Z, not J-Man. Just let me just say nah, that. Jay-Z. Nah, bro. Check Jay -Z. this out. So, yo, okay. look. I'm right. already hyped. And I don't even know him because when I'm in film mode, right. I'm locked You're in. You're in the camera, yeah. Yeah, you know, this camera is just important. Right. You know? So, I'm, I'm filming, and then they're like, yo, Jay is here. And then, look, this day when we're at the court, everybody's at <laughs> like the gym. Every, everybody is at the gym. You got uh, DeMar DeRozan was there. Chris Paul was there. Russell Westbrook was there. And, look, not everybody was signing autographs. So, you got all these big-time stars. And, you know, you had a... You are at a EYBL event. You're supposed to be, like, you know, like... You're signing autographs. You're doing all this sort of stuff. You know, a couple of those guys, they were acting, you know, a little bit Hollywood. Right. You know, they were like, oh, nah, we ain't signing no autographs, man. I don't sign no autographs. Nah, young brother, I ain't, signing, I ain't taking no pictures. He's like, all right, I got you. You're trying to play I'm me. trying you know? to figure out who that's an impersonation. All right, of. yo, nah, this is, this is how sometimes, this is how cats yeah. act when they go yeah. officially Hollywood, you of know? Course. Even though you're at an EYBL event and you can't sign no autographs. But anyways, so... These cats was getting played to the left. They was playing everybody to the left. When Jay-Z walked in the gym, 
people forgot that they was there. When Jay came in the gym and people was like, oh, yo, because it's like it's sort of like a wave of like everybody's like, yo, that's Jay-Z. Yo, Jay is here. Yo, Jay is, yo, Jay is here. And I'm filming the game, you know, because I'm looking at it. You know, I know these kids depend on each clip. Yeah, you never know when that highlight's going to come. Yeah, well, they, right? they depend on this. If it was just about highlights, you know, you're not going to last long. But I actually filmed yeah. the whole game because these kids get their footage sent off to college coaches. Right. Who can change your life for you? Right, right. My my um my homie uh, Kevin Shep came up to me. He was like, "Yo, Jay's right here. Jay's right here." And I didn't even notice him, but it was like, like, "Bam!" Sounds like Kevin too, actually. Yeah. Like so Kevin. yeah, he was like, "You know how?" Yeah. He's like, "Yo, Jay, right there. Yeah. Yo, yo, yeah, that's it. That's hey. it." <laughs> Hey, Jay, it. Jay right there. Yo, you yeah. might want to go and turn your head and stop paying attention and pay attention to what's important. You know? <laughs> so Shep hit me. I was like, all right. So Shep hit me. He was like, Jay is right there. So the first time, you know, I was like, babe, bro, that was bigger than life. But to have another chance to meet the unicorn, you know, like, man, let's tell the truth. A lot of people who take pictures with Jay-Z, that's like, yo, that might be your last time taking a picture with this cat. Right, right. You know that that that's the honest. This this guy like yeah. he doesn't need you, right? You know he he's hanging out with people who have more who are who are looking forward to meeting him. So like right. in his life, every hour is sort of like somebody else's best, moment. Yeah, their best yeah, it's moment. their moment. But you know my moment was different because I was in OG Wan's office. You know we was in the office chilling. You know what I'm saying in Rock Nation. Brand new building, you know, it was sunny outside, you know, and then, you know, Jay come inside the office and it was just like, you know, in one of his videos, how he came in. So he comes <laughs> in like, you know, like, no, nah, he didn't move all like that. Except, yeah. you know, he came in, you could just tell the, the swag swagger was on, yeah. Yeah. on a billion. And I'm like, whoa, this is Jay. And yeah. it was right in front of us. And I'm like, hold on, man. So we sitting over here. And uh, I can't say every name of everybody who was in the room, you right. know. The, right. You know, I might not be invited back. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't need to. You <laughs> said, said the one name. That's yeah, right. yeah. So I'm sitting over here, and I was like, "You got to think your whole life if you are around somebody where you can recite." recite like a lot of people love a lot of people love the bible y'all can't recite the bible you know what i'm saying i'm like yo i can recite recite jay-z lyrics bro i'm wrong i'm wrong for that last one you know what i'm saying i hope some of my church members who see this understand my heart to go play (laughs) yo except i'm like people can recite jay so when you see him it's like you sort of grew up with him because how many times have you listened to like some Jay or something like that to get past the moment in your life? So to actually have a chance to meet him, that was my moment. And it's, it's you know, like everybody else yeah. I meet, and now it's like, hey man, you the, I like you too. But you know, Jay was uh, sort of my moment. Yeah. Bro. You know, I grew up with Jay. Come on, bro. Yeah, that's you what know what I'm saying. Friend. Yeah, bro. We, you know, we were best friends. friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, some of the B <laughs> albums is the best ones. You know, you start knowing all the lyrics. You know, guys. Yeah. Cats can recite Jay. I, I will say this. That's probably one of the best concerts I've ever done. It was Jay-Z and Mary J. Jay-Z and Mary J. Oh, so you, you took it back. That was you a, took it, it was back. over at the Key, Key Bank Arena in Buffalo. Wow. So Jay and Mary J. Did, was, was it, it wasn't on the run? What was it, Jay? Was it like back in the day, Jay? I mean, this has got to be like 15 years ago. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. That junk was tough then back then. But Mary came out like, I'm going down, down baby. Yeah, bro. My heart. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that was bro. It. That was it. Mary J, yeah. You know? <clears throat> I love Mary J. Uh, but back to business now. Back to business. Mr. 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 Howard. Yeah. So, meet Jay-Z. New, New Recruit Media is doing well. Over a million views on YouTube, guys. We're going we're gonna to post his channel in the comments. Because I said it to him. He goes, yeah. Like that. Like, like, Yeah. Yeah, a million views. Like it, that's a lot of views on YouTube. Except that's it, an accomplishment. Like, the, the thing is, like YouTube is one thing. YouTube is cool, except you know you just appreciate all the people who've been watching the videos and all the other social media outlets right. and uh, platforms that you have over the years. So, you know, when you got when you start getting over like twenty five hundred videos, you have just floating around in space. That's not really something to brag about. You know, I know a lot of people talk about well, a ton of views. But, it's, but that's, that's that's consistency, consistency over time. 
Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 that's true, true grinding it out, out right? right? When people, people say, yo, man, I'm grinding it out. Grinding it out, grinding it out of like, like 10 videos, that's not grinding it out. Grinding it out when you, when you used to go from a, a camera where you had to reel it into the, into the TV back in the, that's 20, 25 years ago. Yeah. Like that, that's grinding out to like, people go, man, he's an overnight success. No, you've been doing video for 25 years. I've been doing videos for a lot of years. And the, the way, the reason why I never wanted, you know, like at first, you just want to establish something, but it always feels easier to move forward behind the scenes. And I never wanted to take the attention away from none of the athletes. Because these guys, you know, it's like a, a shooting star, you know, like while you're on your way up, you, so much energy is given. And you want them to have all that time to shine and, you know, to open doors, you know, and, and do stuff like that for them. So I never wanted to become you know, all in the videos and doing all that type of stuff. But now, you know, since after so many years of doing something and I have a nice platform that I'm grateful for, now I think it's time for me to start telling the stories and what's, actually what's let next, you guys then? know what's, what's next. What's going what's on? Next? Man, we just <laughs> it's it's uh I would like a chance to meet a lot of people in the community business world you know basketball i love basketball and i love sports but there's so many other people who i've met along the way and a lot of these different business owners and different people who are doing things outside of pro basketball and pro basketball and pro sports are you're up here you know what i'm saying you're, you're doing your thing but there's a lot of people who have become successful by taking a non-traditional route and these guys are juggernauts too. They're making huge moves, you know? And if you actually start crunching down the numbers and start seeing like what certain people consider success and what's, what it is to be successful, you know, off a dollar amount, a lot of people who didn't go to the pros are actually doing way better financially than a lot of guys who you would right. look at. And you would think that they are going to have just a smooth walk through life. Because, uh, you know, it, it's cr here goes one of the craziest things you hear about. Or don't. Or don't. Like, I try to go and stop these, th these things from being said. Like, you know, certain guys, they'll be like, oh, yeah, man, I got to go D1, man. I'll go D. Man, if I don't go D1, man, I, I probably just end up probably having to go D3. Yeah. You won't. It's not that easy. Right. Division three, you, you got to think, our Division three schools in Rochester is like, you got RIT. You got to be smart. You got to have your stuff together to go to RIT. You have U of R. You have to be smart. You got to be smart to get your stuff to U of R. Right. You have St. John's Fisher. You have to be smart right. to get to St. John's right. Fisher. You have Nazareth. You got to be really smart, really smart to get inside of Nazareth. Right. What, what else? You got Roberts Wesley. You got to be what? Really smart to get in Roberts. Like, so it's, it's not like a trade off of being like, oh, if I don't go to Kentucky, I'm just going to go to old, old U of R. Oh, just old. No, these are really good right. schools. And a lot of the guys who leave these Division three programs, they actually do a lot better than some of the guys who are going to the pro, you know, who have that idea of like, once I go to the pros and I get this D1 scholarship, and I'm not hating on none of the D1 scholarships, none of my D1 ballers, because, you know, it's a small few. It's a selected few of you X-Men out here who are just so dope and, you know what I'm saying, athletic, but there's a whole, there's a whole group of guys where, a Division three school, Division two maybe, but a Division three school can really benefit your all-around life. Because, you know, you don't want to say it, but the ball will eventually stop. And you're not going to always be your coach's yeah. favorite. Yeah. And that's something that you have to go and be ready to deal with because, yeah, Everybody wants that dream, and everybody, you know, I think a lot of people are chasing after clout. Clout, clout doesn't help. Uh, doesn't, doesn't help pay the mortgage. mortgage. It doesn't pay a mortgage. 
Or, you can call your mortgage company and be like, yo, I got all this clout. I got a lot of influencers on social media. Can I pay with that? Clout doesn't nah, pay homies. bills. Yeah. Clout, clout really doesn't pay bills. So I know a lot of people spend a lot of times trying to get clout. And maybe it's the endorphins you get off of seeing a lot of red lights flash behind your name to be like, hey, look at me. I'm so popular. Everybody, look. They really do like me. Finally. I'm oh, finally here, wait. This accepted. is what we did before we started. You know? Oh, thank you. They finally accepted me, mama. I'm one of the cool kids now. Right. Yeah, except it's, it's, it's not about that, man. It's about making the best decision and seeing what's actually beneficial to you. You know, because there's some kids, they're going to be coming out of, like, sometimes you think that a lot of kids are just going to be heading, you know, like, you want to go to a big school and it looks better when you come home and you have this jacket on and you might be waiting to wear your jacket. You know, I remember coming back from the bowl game, West Virginia, you just couldn't wait to yeah. show up someplace where everybody Anywhere. can see the bowl jacket everywhere. on. You yeah. went everywhere, right? You went everywhere. You, you wore, like, where you, else could we go? You just where wanted people. people to see it. And was it the best, you know, was it the best for you? Because you, maybe it went someplace else where, you know, say you leave your high school and you got like maybe at the most, you got 500 kids in your high school. You can go off to college, you go off to this big D1 school, it's like 500 kids in your class and they don't care if you're not in class because you're just, you know, a piece of sand in the beach. And a lot of kids, they're, they're in a rush to get that. Right. And really, right. you should start being in a rush to see what's going to benefit you the most and can help you out. So, and that's not the only routes to go either. And that's something I want to talk about. On your, on your new podcast? podcast? Yeah, my new podcast, What's yeah. What's podcast going to be called? Do you have yeah. that name yet? Um, at first, I was just like, new new recruit podcast, you know? like I used to have a company called Under the Flesh News. News okay. people really want to see, you know, except uh, I don't I don't know what I want to lead with, you know? Is it, it going to be like a regular date and time every week? What, what's... Um, this, all right, this is where we're going to start. I'm trying to get him to publicly proclaim it so that he has to stick to it. All right, everybody. This is where we're going to start off at. It's been a lot of years, and everybody who's around me, you know, what we have this conversation with all the time. I've been told for a lot of years, like, you know, a lot of my close, close friends have told me this. My wife have told me this for a lot of years. She was like, it's time for you to come out of your shell. And I think that... Let the people see you. It's time for the people to see me, and it's time for me to reach out and actually talk to everyone. And, you know, make it more than just, you know, a seasonal thing. I think that I might have to be on the path to at least, you know, try to do it weekly. And if, and if I get more and more comfortable with this and, I'm, and if I'm feeling this, because, you know, I got a couple cats out there where I'm already about to call you up. Right. right. Yeah. You pick up your phone. I need you. I need you to pick up your phone. All right, so you're going to do it weekly. You're going to do like a video that you could rip to the audio to yeah. make, make that a podcast. I gotta, I gotta talk Who are you about looking for for guests? guests? Just influential people that have a good story. I'm looking for, yeah, I'm looking for it. Well, everybody could be anybody. has a, Yeah, it can be anybody. Everyday people. Yeah, everyday people, or you can be, you know, fresh off the moon. You know, you can... Every day, people. Yeah, yo, yeah. I'm off the moon. I just fresh yeah, off you the know, moon. you know, you be somebody like, yeah. yo, man, I'm fresh back from Mars. You know, I just came back. You know, chilling over here. Feel good to be back home. Yeah, I, I want to. It's so many people because I've met so many people. You don't understand. I've met so many people, and I've, I mean, I've had experiences that I would. I mean, like my first time ever eating. Uh, what was it called? A uh, calipari? What is it called? Uh, you know what I'm saying. The uh, you know, it's like a seafood oh, calamari. calamari, calamari, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, look, my first time actually eating calamari was in Hollywood with it with Hollywood with Jim Hart and uh, you know, Shep and uh, JG3 Dad and I think John and uh, it was Coach Bayheim. Who actually offered me Jim, my, Jim Behan. Yep. Okay. Jim, yep. Jim Behan. Legendary coach of yep. Syracuse Orangemen. Yep, Jim, and I call him okay. Jim. You know I mean, it's just. He, the, he ain't recruiting me. I don't know if you guys noticed this yet. He's, he's just like, like Jay, you know, 
Coach Jim. Oh man, he's Hall of Fame, like yeah, legendary bro, he's people. He's just like, like bro, uh, yo, yo, Bayheim is the man. We was in Cali, and he's just walking down the street, and everybody's walking up to him like the number one recruits in the whole nation will go out of their way just to say oh, what's up to him. Right, yeah, he's right. the, bro. He's the man. Everybody knows he's the man, but he told me he was like, hey, just try it. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like I right, go and try a piece, and it was cool because my first time when I called my family because we we didn't grow up eating calamari when we right. were hungry. No, All right? That's it. You don't. You're not getting squid. No, we did. We did yeah. not get. Yeah, like squid. yo, man, dad, we're really hungry, so we get some squid. No, we did not have squid. <laughs> Most of the fish we ate had a lot of bones in it. Yeah, know, so yeah. it wasn't it was like some catfish for us. Yeah, it like, was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get. Yeah, it wasn't like that. You know, I'm, I'm learning more. And I'm. you know what makes everything so exciting about this now is because I get a chance to reintroduce myself to so many different people. And that, that's, what's pump, that's what pumps me up. You know? You know, I, I'll tell you guys something about me, you know. There's a, I have seven sons and a wife. Seven sons, all from my wife. Seven. Hold on, guys. This gets this. Thank you. Oh, hold on, hold on. One more of these. You won! You won? Yes. <laughs> you won, bro. Yo, she couldn't keep her hands off of me. It happened. It happened. You know, that's like, part of being out like, here. I'm, I'm just going to make my own championship basketball team. That's yeah. it. Oh, you yeah, five bro. And two, you know it? what? Yeah, and we retired after number seven. So, you know, uh, it's over. Try, no, no girls? girls? No girls, no girls. Yeah, we couldn't have a girl. It, and they said it's a man's it, fault. It's it, all on me. Is it? Is there like all guys in your family? I don't the, know. My problem is, no, I was like, um, I, I was diagnosed with being too manish. <laughs> you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm real manish. Oh, like, I, I understand, bro. I understand, man. man, man, man right? Yeah. Man, 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 you see it. Boom, boom. Like, uh, uh, you know, like, when you too manish, it's hard. It's hard it's to hard make. It's out there. Yeah. You know, because if you make girls, you got to have that little part in you where you want to cry and stuff when you're watching movies and stuff. You know, that's when you start having girls <laughs> when you're crying when you're watching movies. And you oh, can't hold back okay. your emotions. We'll talk to wifey and she's talking about you know, you, you're like, crying in the movie yesterday. It's a little bit of throwback. So nah, nah, we don't even watch movies. We don't even have time to watch movies. That's true. Seven, so nine in the family. That's that's something else. Let's let's yes, leave sir. off with that. But like, look at if you want to be in on the podcast, just comment like, "Yo, I know somebody," or tag somebody you know that should be in his podcast. And then we'll also put details in the comments in the description on, on day and time and where to tune in. Perfect, guys. Hit me up. Um, I'm definitely. I'm looking for certain things. I'm looking for some writers. If you're good at writing, I'm looking for some writers. I'm looking for some people who. Want some opportunities. If you have crazy mixtapes, if you if you're at the games, you know, because I'm not gonna be at every oh, single yeah, yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. But if you're at the games and you see something crazy and you're ready to start building your brand and you're ready to get your I name have somebody out there. For you. Actually, we talked about it. Hit me up. About hit me it, up if you want these Chicago opportunities. Chicagoland, Illinois area. I need to know what's going on every single night. I wanna know who's the hottest all over New York, all East Coast, West Coast. You guys send me some dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm plugged up. I, by the way, I'm plugged up. Yeah, I'm plugged. I'm, I'm the plugs plug. To tell you the truth, you know, I know a lot of, <laughs> I know a lot of well, people. Well, let's say this. Know? So then, if you're in, let's strategically look, look, look. There's the map on the wall there. Uh, so if you're yeah. like Illinois area, north, all northwest, all Midwest. Midwest. If you're in the West Coast. Coast yeah. If you're in South, like you Texas, see, Mississippi, yeah. Tennessee, place, that Middle South area. If you're like Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, that area. New York. Yep. You know, Boston. Okay. Augusta, that way you can cover Atlanta. The US, and then you know you're like, we got Mr. Worldwide here. Yeah, bro. We Howard out here, man. Junior, you guys baby. have to go and send me some footage, man. Y'all reach out to me. I need a lot of people to start reaching out. Like, reach out because... uh we have a lot of things going on, but like as far as opportunities, if you guys know somebody who's into tech and videos and doing all this type of stuff, please reach out to me because I'm ready to open some doors for you. I can't be every place all around, you know, but I can get you to a point where you might be out here. You know, how, what I'm how, how can, can you do it with, with seven, seven kids, kids and a wife? wife? Uh, What's the secret? secret? Give him one little nugget before we go. I'll give you guys a nugget. And this is the thing that I want you guys to live and die by. 
You know, every time that you feel that it's too much, you got to remember that there's somebody who spent their whole night praying for the things that you take that you take for granted. You know, somebody can, they're sitting over there every single day just trying to get out of that bed. You know, they're trying to fight through it. They just want to be able to open their hands. They want to be able to see again. They want to be able to I hear mean, they again. They just want to be able to have kids. They want to be able to have just kids. One. They just, just want one. one kid. They just want one. And, you know, there's so You're many things that, that that's, that's right. right. So yeah. if you think about all the things that you really have going for yourself and everybody's not going to look the same and everybody's not going to have the same muscles and everybody's not going to be tall. But if you can appreciate what you have, your whole life changes. Right then and there, if you appreciate the things that you have, and you really appreciate it, and you hold on to them things, more of those things will start to happen. So that's my nugget I can give you. I appreciate and, uh, it. And that's where we at, you know? Let's, let's leave them with some, let me see. You wanna go beast mode? Let's see this one. Beast mode, man. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero with J Man Speaks. I want to give a round of applause to Mr. Howard T. Nix. So make sure you show him some love in the comments. Like, share, tag, whoever you think might be good for the show. It's going to be launching at what next week? Next week? Yeah, we might launch this week. This week? Hesitate, I've been scoring every day. Champagne Perrier, since 9 3, been in the box, now I'm stepping up to home. Like straight out the sand lot, now I'm plying on the globe. I work hard, I show love, that calm and steady grind. Got this far, I go hard, let God take control. I was stuck with skinny, now my weight up, got no energy for haters. See you trying to see you later. I'm shooting for the stars, need no laser beam blowing like the greatest, but it's one who's always greater. Go dummy, go beast on